Hello people, welcome back to Opus Magnum. We are on almost the final stretch, I'd say. So, for those who aren't fully aware of the story, this last one is like a bonus one, but we are on number five. This last one has got all these weird bits and pieces. It's, uh, I don't know, I'm not going into that yet. It's very confusing. Um, but for, yeah, for those who haven't been following, who haven't played it before, don't really know the story, um, I'm going to do a very quick recap. So at the very beginning, we qualify as a new alchemist. Um, and we have ourselves a letter of congratulations. And we join a new house as their alchemist. We get asked to do a whole bunch of different bits and pieces. And then suddenly another house has an act of aggression. And they're not too happy. So, chapter two. We take the honourable path and do what we can, but there is war, so we have to prepare for the war with a series of bits and pieces. We end up surrendering because we, we can't fight them, they're too powerful. Then in chapter 3, we are in exile because we lost the war but we have run away. So what we are now doing is we are essentially working our way to try and get back at the people that weren't very nice. We get in touch with a thief who agrees that he is going to steal a large amount of lead for us so that we are an alchemist. We will try to turn it into gold. Chapter 4, we deal with a woman who was exiled and she is trying to get revenge. So we basically work on the lead, work on a bunch of other things, we then purify the gold, and we, uh, which is the big deal obviously, and we then use the gold for a fancy jewel and the gold thread. We then decide that we are going to go to a new fancy show that's being put on. That's where we are. So there's our invitation to the ball, as you can see there. Um, there's a series of things going on, and that is us there, the presenting of Clara Hasoria. And that's what we're preparing for. So we have um, a series of things going on. Um, all of this stuff, I feel like it's all going to be going towards some kind of 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 thing that's going to go in the lipstick or something i don't know but we are going to start with the mist we're going to work our way down from this list because it's now very very hard now i have a story to tell because i lost all of my saved data on this game i don't know where it went i don't know what happened to it i had to start all over again so i have had to not rush but i've essentially had to redo all of the puzzles through to now so that I can carry on with the story. What that means is pr pretty much every single puzzle that you have seen me do is different now. So I'm going to go back and just show you one that's different. And the fact is I actually love this. Because I don't remember how I did this one before. But now there's loads of spinning. Especially at the end. Um... Because, again, I just had to try and work out again how to do it. Whee! Look at that. All the spinning. I love the spinning. Um, I find it for any big structure with something in the center, this is the easiest way to do it. You basically connect everything you can there around the center however you can. You just have to connect it so that it is connected. Then you can spin it around connectors and the connectors will make the extra links that you need. It's also a very good way to do the strands. But we don't have to worry about that too much today. There it is. Look at that. That's really cool. I love that. I do love the way that that worked out. Um, it's really cool. So, back to chapter 5. And we're going to go straight into the Mist of Hallucination. Now, 
that, that's what we've got to do there on the right. I decide that I'm going to use the device that we have, first of all, in order to create the one we need that's attached to the right. Then I realise, actually, I need one of them first anyway, because it has to be attached at the top. And I have an idea of how I'm going to do all the attaching. You'll see in a sec. So basically, the first thing I do is I move one of these elements using arm one. But then I'm going to take it with arm two because I need it at the end there, you see. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach and rotate and attach and rotate. And that way... I will be slowly building this structure here. See that? I'm just attaching, rotating, and moving. And that's all you need to do, because all of the rest of them are blue. Now, I have since discovered an issue. Now, in that rotating the very last one doesn't work, because this one that I've created is in the way. So I need to grab it and move it back, because now it's out of the way. I've then discovered another problem, and that problem is that it hits the arm. See, now I need to turn it clockwise, and it hits the arm, so it's no good to me. I need to extend the arm out, otherwise it won't turn. But now I realise, well, maybe I should just extend the whole thing out, because then I won't have to move too much. It will still do the same thing. It will just be moved. It will just be extended. So there you go. It all still does exactly what I need it to. It's just extended one, one session out. And now I've got the last one to add to it. And then all I need to do is attach my stored away element on the left. See, look, there it is. So my plan is I'm just going to connect it directly after it's needed there. I'm trying to get the timing right. I thought I could maybe move it across a bit, but I can't because it has to have the space to rotate. So you see I'm now going to move it across, get it in line. Boom, 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 boom. And then I've got to move it across. Didn't quite work because it wasn't attached. There you go. And now I shrink it down. And here it is running at normal speed. So basically it just attaches. It then rotates them the correct way. And attaches what's needed and done. In a way, that's the uh, probably the easiest way to do the strings of elements. Now, it's taken a long time, and there's a chance I should probably have used several arms. But it's for me, when you only have one of that element, you might as well only use one of the, of, of the arms. Unless you have multiple elements, it's not worth it. And there we go. Costs was bang on. Area was a little bit low. But cycles was terrible. But you know the saying in this is two out of three ain't bad. So now we move on to the gem. And look at that. Look at the state of that. So many salts around the gold. <laughs> it's insane. And now the plan I have for this. Is what you saw just now with the other gem. I am essentially going to be building it. And then spinning spinning it round as I go. And there's not actually that many connections that need to be made. It's just somewhat time wasting. Because you see I've got to connect two and then spin. And then two and then spin. And because I've only got one arm doing it, it's a little bit... It's a little bit long. Probably one of the longest lines... One of the longest timelines, I think, that I've done with the amount that there are here. And again, I could probably cut down 
on the time if I added extra arms and bits and pieces, but I prefer this. There you go, look at that. So we've got the basic structure. Now all we've got to do is add one more salt in between the arms. But you see, this is what I was saying before. You've now got to wait and, and wait until it gets all the way through it before you can really see it running. And in case you wonder why I've moved it all across slightly, was because it actually added it in the wrong place. So I have to basically start the arm on the back position. And now I've come across a big issue. And I realise that actually I now have to move the, uh, the, uh, the salt to here. Otherwise it collides. Which means now I have to completely change the entire lineup. I have to move it all up across a little bit each time. Remembering where everything went. I do also have to uh, get rid of two because I didn't have enough space. So I've now got to add the two more. Um, there's and, and now I have to check where I am at because I've got lost a little bit. There you go. So I've, I've completed it. So now what I need to do is add one, let it rotate. Boom, boom. See, that was too many. I only need to turn it once. So I do repeat again, and I turn it again. And now what I'm doing is I'm adding the extra arm in the middle, and then it's mostly completed. The problem I have is I've got one more connection to add. I want to get it in the center. The plan as well is to not let go of the last one and to uh, move it across. So I add the last connector in there and that will add the extra one that I need. You see there. I've got a couple more twists to make. Try and get the... I don't want to waste money on track that I don't need. I then realise I've used the wrong thing. Alright, now here we go. This is it in full speed. So we have one arm there. We have two arms. You know, I wish I could play it on the fast speed. I really do. Um, I would love it so much. It just it takes so long uh, because it does run so slow, especially in these final bigger puzzles. In the middle, in the middle. There it is, you see that? And it's doing the connection on the bottom. And then you spin it, and then it's done. There you go. So that is the first two of chapter five. Done all nice and succinctly. Um, I have looked ahead to see what the other three alike and there is a chance that what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do the first do the next two in the next video and then do the final one maybe on its own depending on how difficult it is it looks like there's quite involved um, but there's bound to be at least one other puzzle after that. There's a few that still haven't unlocked yet. So I might do that final one that I've got, and then maybe the next one that unlocks. But you see, I don't. I, I could have included it in this, because this is only, a, a, what, almost 15, 20 minutes. I could have put another one in here. But I don't want to do that. I like these being kind of short and to the point, I think. Plus, it gives you guys an idea of how these puzzles work and shows you mechanics that you can use yourself. There it is, big snowflake. And the last one. Two, three, four, five, 
six. Done. Look at that. Done. And again, cycles are terrible, but the area and the cost is perfect, and that is what we're looking at mostly. Um, two out of three ain't bad. And I mean that again, that's the way you've got to look at these. It is gonna be practically impossible to score excellent on all three at this level. So from here on out, we are going to do the Voltic Coil and the Unstable Compound. And then the Lipstick and probably one of these that haven't unlocked yet. There's bound to be at least one more. So that is going ahead. So thank you so much for watching. This has been Opus Magnum. Please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Why not take a look at some of the other stuff that I am doing? There are links on the screen right now. And I will see you again next time.